Good morning and uh, welcome to church this morning. Greetings to all of you in the name of our creator, the one who brings us all together for the sake of love. It is so great to see that so many of you are logged on and tuned in this morning. Can you believe this is our 10th Sunday of online worship? I continue to be astonished by the ways that we remain dedicated to uh, remaining connected and being together uh, during this time. Even during a time of quarantine, Emmanuel United Church Waterloo Wayside finds a way to answer the call to outreach. This time, our needlecraft group, so the sewers in our community, answered the call to sew gowns as part of a wider community initiative to supply personal protective equipment. So thank you for always answering the call to help in true Emmanuel fashion. Now, many of you uh, will be aware that this past week has been Nurses Week. Also, this week on May 12th marked the 200th birthday of Florence Nightingale. So I figured this Sunday would be a great Sunday to dedicate our service to nurses and to all the frontline workers who day in and day out are caring for our sick, who are working even when it is dangerous to do so. So this morning, as we worship together, let our hearts, our hearts be open to the ones who put their own health at risk to care for the stranger and the ones who've answered the call to care. Let us begin in the usual way by acknowledging the territory and opening in prayer. For those of you who are with us this morning who find themselves outside of the Haldeman Tract, then I would just invite you to reflect on the land you do find yourself on and the first peoples who inhabit the land. We acknowledge the traditional territory upon which we gather. In 1784, the Haldeman Treaty granted a tract of land to the Haudenosaunee Six Nations Iroquois peoples as compensation for their alliance with British forces during the American Revolution. This tract of land includes 10 kilometers on either side of the Grand River, which is known as the Haldeman Tract. The original peoples of this land include the Attawandaran, also known as the Neutral Peoples, and the Anishinaabe. Today, less than 5% of this territory remains Six Nations land. The original peoples have sought to walk gently on this land, and we endeavor to follow their example. We seek a new relationship with First Nations peoples through truth and reconciliation, and we actively seek right relations based in honor and with deep respect. Let us pray. Healer of our every ill, you are the God of compassion, courage, and love. We give thanks for your servants who by your inspiration give of themselves in service to those in need. May we likewise be inspired to follow their example of compassionate service, to give hope to the hopeless, to love the unloved, and peace to the dying. Through Jesus the Christ, who remains our richest example of the ones who answered the call to love. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, a peace the world cannot give. May the peace of Christ be with you. Know that we are holding each other close. 
in this time of being apart. So at this time, I would like to invite uh, any children that we have to uh, open their cameras. For everyone else, we'll ask that you keep your cameras off and keep yourself muted. We'd ask that uh, any of the kids would like to turn their cameras on, but keep themselves muted at this time. And then that way, if you put your setting on view active cameras, then everybody will be able to see the kids that come forward. So I see we have Erica with us today. Hi, Erica. Good to see you. Do we have any other kids with us this morning? Just look in the chat here. Okay, so we have Bridget is listening as well. They just don't have a camera on this morning. So we have Bridget listening. We have Erica out there. I uh, don't see uh, Bridget and Delaney this morning, but maybe they will pop on uh, as they're able. I wanted to just talk a little bit this morning about what we're going to be talking about in the service. Oh, and I see uh, Megan is there. That means that we have little Alex online as well. So today we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, usually us church folks are always talking about Jesus, right? But today, hey, Alex. Hi, Alex. Today we are talking about uh, what Jesus actually said about the Holy Spirit. And we're doing this because as the season of Easter is coming to a close, we're going to be entering another church season. And the church season is called Pentecost. But really, that's just a big fancy word for saying the season of the Spirit. And so we, have, we, we need to know what we're looking for, right, when we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Because I don't know, has anyone seen the Holy Spirit? Have any of you seen the Holy Spirit? I don't know. Jesus says that we have. Jesus says exactly we know what she looks like. You have already seen her. That's what Jesus says. So I'm like, well, where is she? I don't know. Oh, there's my, there's my beloved wife. Rachel's in the room with me. I wonder if Rachel's the Holy Spirit. Do you think Rachel's the Holy Spirit? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but Jesus says what to look for. He says the Holy Spirit looks like this. Someone who stands up for you. Someone who lends a helping hand and someone who doesn't leave you when you're down. Hmm. I wonder if any of you know somebody like that. Or maybe you have been someone like that. I bet Bridget uh, knows some, someone who maybe when, uh, they, when you were feeling sick, maybe uh, mommy or daddy came along and uh, made you feel better. I wonder if that happened. I wonder if any of you know someone who uh, has stood up for you or stayed with you when you were feeling sad. So this is kind of what it means to be a helper. And Jesus says that the Holy Spirit looks a lot like an advocate or a helper. So those are some of the ways that we can begin to think about what the Holy Spirit looked like. Now, last week, we talked about leaving our stones, right? Our painted stones with messages of love on them out in random places in the world. And by doing that, also sending messages of love, I think we also become like the Holy Spirit. I'm wondering, Stephen, I think you have a picture of the Holy Spirit, don't you? Do you want to put a picture of the Holy Spirit up right now? <gasps> Look at that! Look at all the Holy Spirits I see. I see Delaney and Roman. I see Erica and Bridget. I see Alex and Megan. And there's Michelle and Brendan. Wow, the Holy Spirit is everywhere. No wonder Jesus says the Holy Spirit 
looks a lot like you. You know who else looks like the Holy Spirit? Today we're going to be talking a lot about a woman named Florence Nightingale. Now this woman was born 200 years ago. But this woman did something very, very important with her life. She became a nurse. And not only did she become a nurse, but she taught other people to become nurses as well. And today, when people think about becoming a nurse as their profession or for their work, they attribute that all the way back to a woman named Florence Nightingale. And she uh, stood up for um, people to build a hospital and she would help people during the war and they called those places hospitals as well. And she would sit by their bedside and she would nurse them back to health and she would also write letters to their families telling them if they were okay. And so in this way, she was also a helper or an advocate or in many ways, someone who looks like the Holy Spirit. So I'm wondering if kids this week, you could do me a favor and think about times when you or someone else has made you have good feelings inside because they did an act of love. So whether they hugged you, maybe a, ham, a family member hugged you, maybe uh, a family member made you feel better when you were feeling down, or maybe you uh, helped out with dinner, or maybe you helped do the laundry, or maybe you picked up your toys, and, and that gave you a good feeling inside. And not only did it give you a good feeling inside, it gave somebody else a good feeling inside. So it's not so much that we are the Holy Spirit, but what we do is when we create loving feelings, we are like the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit teaches us to love so that we can become love. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So thanks for uh, listening. Thanks for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing all of you again at the end of the service when we will all be then invited to open our cameras and our microphones and share a time of fellowship with one another. But for now, we'll say bye for now and we'll say see you later. And uh, we'll get everybody to turn off their mics and turn off their cameras. Thanks, kids. And I am uh, excited to tell you that we have Arthur and Edith this morning that will be reading our scripture for us. So Arthur and Edith, I will turn it over to you now to uh, read for us. This is one of uh, Florence Nightingale's favorite psalms. We are reading from Psalm number 40, verses 5 to 10. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. In your plans for us, none can be compared with you. O oh, that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep within me. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire. You have opened my ears. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you have not required. I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep within me. And so I said, here I am. I come in the scroll of the book it is written for me. I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep within me. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. I have not restrained my lips, O Lord, you know. I love to do your will, O my God. Your law is deep within me. I have not hidden your righteousness in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your steadfast love and truth from the great assembly. 
I love to do your will, oh my God. Your law is deep within me. Thank you very much, Arthur and Edith. And uh, I will be reading our gospel today from the Inclusive Bible. And it comes from the Gospel of John. And it's uh, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me and obey the command I give you, I will ask the one who sent me to give you another paraclete, which means advocate, another helper to be with you always, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept, since the world neither sees her nor recognizes her. But you can see the spirit because she remains with you and will be within you. I won't leave you orphaned. I will come back to you a little while now and the world will see me no more. But you'll see me because I live and you will live as well. On that day, you'll know that I am in God and you are in me and I am in you. Those who obey the commandments are the ones who love me, and those who love me will be loved by God. I too will love them, and I will reveal myself to them. Herein lies wisdom. Thanks be to God. Florence Nightingale was born May 12, 1820. 2020 marks the 200th anniversary of her birth. Nightingale is renowned as the world's first nurse. I have found it interesting to think about the meaning her life and work continues to have for us today. Her story echoes reciprocity between faith inspiring work and life and life and work inspiring faith for it is well known that nightingale's faith informed all the work she did as a nurse public health advocate and hospital reformer florence is actually quoted as saying when speaking to other nurses that Christ was the author of our profession. Quoting from the Gospel of Matthew when Jesus says, I was sick and you took care of me. Truly I tell you just as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. I was sick and you nursed me. Interestingly, her deep faith was also informed by her knowledge of natural and social social sciences and statistics. God made the world and runs it by laws, she would say. She believed we can discover those laws through quantitative research and then act to intervene. For her, essentially, God's creation was good. But things go wrong. Disease, crime, destitution, famine, and war. However, we should not pray to be delivered from plague, pestilence, and famine, but rather find out their causes and work to undo them. Nightingale would actually say in humor, I sometimes wondered why we prayed to be delivered from plague, pestilence, and famine when all the common sewers of London run into the Thames. She's saying that it's redundant to ask for God's help if we're not willing to be a part of the solution. God wants us to act and gave us means it gave us the means and the reason and the memory and the skill to do so. And so when we act, 
we become God's co-workers working together in the world. She quotes from 1 Corinthians where the Apostle Paul says, God is the initiator of good, but needs us to second it. The reading from 1 John number 4 tells us something of Nightingale's understanding of the love of God. This was a favorite passage of hers. God first loved us, and it is up to us to reflect the love back to a needy and broken world. For her and for the many nurses that she mentored in those days, faith was the backbone of their calling to become a nurse. Her school, however, was secular. It was for all people for people of all faiths and no faith god's love is um, god's love is for all god's creatures she would say nightingale found great meaning in a, in the passage from exodus 33 where moses says show me your glory and the lord said i will make my goodness pass before you she brings these two thoughts together. The glory of God is goodness. God does not want praise or burnt sacrifices, but rather for us to cooperate in repairing the damage done to God's earth. See, it is the cooperation that is the praise. She wrote, God does not want to be praised, to be adored, to have his glory sung. We can scarcely conceive of a good person wishing it. How many times when people are regaled as heroes do they say, I'm not a hero, I just did what needed to be done? Well, for Florence, she thought it was the same for God. God doesn't want your praise as much as God simply wants you to do what needs to be done. At a time when most people thought of God as harsh judge, her God was wise and loving and encouraging. Nightingale wanted people to think better and bigger of God. In her Bible at Romans 2 tells people, that's where it tells people to be transformed by the renewing of your mind and not conformed to the world. She asked, shall we put a limit in the place where God has not put one? Nightingale herself acted on the belief that there is no such thing as asking too much from God. And perhaps the greatest contribution she made to healthcare was the introduction of professional nursing into the dreaded workhouse infirmaries. Again, her faith guided her. For her, God did not choose between people, but loved the poor as well as the rich. Nightingale longed to nurse in a workhouse infirmary, but her family would not permit it. Even during war, she devoted some of her energy to thinking about how to reform those places, those workhouses, upon her return. She told her friend, the mother superior, she could not keep visiting in workhouse infirmaries because that only breaks the visitor's art. She was compelled to do more than just visit. When the opportunity arose to do something serious about workhouses in Liverpool, thanks to the generous support of a philanthropist, Nightingale jumped at the opportunity. She explained, there is no reason whatsoever why workhouse infirmaries should not be nursed and the sick cared for as efficiently and effectively as in the best nursed hospital. To her father, she writes, we should consider that the same tie really connects us to every one of our fellows as the tie which connects us with God. That to neglect the ill, the old woman, the dirty child is the same crime against the Almighty and a blasphemy unto God. 
What we do to each other, we do to God. For Florence, there was little distinction. The cross of Christ for Nightingale had practical meaning. For Christ voluntarily gave of himself. Nightingale said, not in the vulgar sense, as if it were to appease the anger of some perfect being, but in the sense of uh, willingly incurring any and all sufferings which come by way of helping to carry out God's will and work. Jesus's faithfulness and courage gave her courage in her own life when she was confronted with difficulties. Should I say, save me from this hour when it is for this cause that I have come to this hour. Florence is also well known for writing letters to families of fallen soldiers. And it is said that she did most of her letter writing at night. She carried a lamp through the long corridors of Barrack Hospital. And, and so thus she got her name, the lady with the lamp. I think the light image works for Nightingale on many levels. Shining a lamp at the bedside of a soldier as the reflection of Jesus, the light of the world, and also her lamp reflecting the bringing of the light of reason to her work. So friends, as the, the season of Easter is drawing to a close, we will soon enter the season of Pentecost, the season of the Spirit. And our scripture readings today in many ways are foreshadowing. We are being prepared for the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Our hearts are being called to open and we are being positioned to receive. The Spirit is coming, but what are we looking for? What does the Holy Spirit look like and how will we know when we receive it? Well, we've been given three clues. We've been, giving, we've been given two from our scripture and one from our friend Florence. Clue number one, the Holy Spirit looks like an advocate, one who stands up for you when you need it, one who speaks on your behalf, one who lends you a helping hand, and it looks like the one who comes alongside and doesn't leave you when you're down. The Holy Spirit looks like Jesus. The Spirit is another advocate, suggesting that Jesus is the first. The Spirit, Jesus goes on to say, will abide with us just as Jesus, the Word made flesh, abides with us. The Spirit is sent in Jesus' name and reminds us of what he taught. So in a very real way, the Spirit mediates Jesus' presence and continually reminds us what love looks like. And the third clue, the work and the life of Florence Nightingale. She herself resembles an advocate in calling for reform, one who came alongside. Her life is one that resembles the things that Jesus taught. Her life looked like one dedicated to aligning oneself with the truth of love. As we learned last week, love is the spirit of truth. Love is the lens that gives us perfect vision. It is only love that allows us to see the risen Christ at work and the Holy Spirit and God. For only love has 2020 vision. Perhaps it's quite fitting that the bicentennial celebration of Florence Nightingale falls during the pandemic of 2020. Could there be a more fitting time for us to be called to see love, to become love? Wherever one is advocating for love, the Holy Spirit is present. Now Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So does this mean if we don't, he doesn't? No, it, it doesn't work that way. Remember, God is love. 
so God can never not be love. The critical voice in your head is not God's, it's your own. It's the voice of this world that you've been socialized to hear. Unless the voice brings with the sound of unconditional love, it's not God, because love can never not be love. The Holy Spirit is the advocate outside, but also inside your mind. The one calling for compassion over judgment. The one calling for love instead of hate. These are the whispers of the Spirit ever reminding us to be loved for ourselves and for others. The Spirit of Truth is that love is the way. Love is the way in which we will see. I think God loves us whether we keep the commandments or not, but it is in keeping Jesus's only commandment to love one another as I have loved you that opens the space to fully see with perfect vision God revealed in our midst and the Holy Spirit at work and is in the seeing it is in the seeing of love in our life and in our work that generates the renewing of our mind and the softening of our hearts. We must love in order to see love. And when we see love, we cannot help but become love, become an advocate for love. In summary, the Holy Spirit is an advocate that looks a whole lot like Jesus, which means we've actually seen the Spirit lots of times. Any time, in fact, someone stands up for another. Any time someone acts like Jesus. Any time someone bears the love to another. We've seen the Holy Spirit. So no wonder then, Jesus says, you already know her. Because as it turns out, the Holy Spirit at one time or another has probably looked a lot like you maybe even a little like me, and definitely a lot like the nurses and the other frontline workers in our midst. So how do you see the Holy Spirit? Hold up a mirror and become love. Thank you to all the nurses and all the frontline workers. Every day you show up you come alongside and you use reason and you use science and you use love. And we thank you for it is this hour that you have come. And we thank you for answering the call. Amen. This time we will have our hymn and uh, for you who have a Voices United at home, it is number 619. The hymn is called Healer of Our Every Ill. And uh, Nancy Martin will be playing on the piano and Patrick Martin will be singing. And please follow along, even though you are muted, sing along in our hearts and in your homes. Take it away, Nancy and Patrick. Ah. 
how your grace is still unfolding. Give us all your vision, God of love, healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow. Give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Give us strength to love each other, every sister, every brother, spirit of all kindness, be our guide, healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow. Give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. You who know each thought and feeling, teach us all your way of healing. Spirit of compassion, fill our hearts. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow. Give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Thank you for that beautiful singing and music. Stephen, uh, I'm told that we have a photo of one of our congregation members standing beside the grave of Florence Nightingale. Do you have that photo? I will work to get that on the screen. Friends, let us pray. Healing God, we give thanks for nurses and all who work in healthcare and medical professions and the frontline workers. Continue to sustain and support their life-giving dedication and courage. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Compassionate God, you are the spirit of gentleness. Raise up in us a sense of dedication and passion for justice, to care for those on the margins of society and those who are particularly in need. Make us mindful that we are all differently abled and that all have a place at your table. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Inspiring God, in the spirit of Florence Nightingale, open our eyes to new ways of service and give us the courage to pursue them, neither fearing the unknown nor clinging to the ways of the past. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Liberating God, we remember all of those in prisons, in hospitals, care homes, and refugee camps, that those who live in them, that those who live in them, that those who live in them will find human dignity, healing, and respect. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Living God, we remember before you the ill, the hospitalized, those awaiting surgery and those recuperating, especially all of those who are on our hearts and our minds at this time. Let us take a moment to pray the silent prayers that are on our hearts in this moment.
and we pray for our community members. Uh, this time I'd like to pray for the daughter of Leslie Litwiler, Amy, and her son-in-law, Frank. Frank's mom is, uh, was a resident of Long the Forest Hill uh, long-term care facility. Uh, as we know, Forest Hill is one of the ones that uh, was hardest hit with COVID and Frank's mom has been moved to hospital and um, not expected to live uh, too much longer. So we are holding them in our prayers. Also, we are holding in prayer the Sai family, the Moksulis family, the Little family, Brian and Anne Marie Smith and Mark and Sue Havitz, all in their time of grief. We pray for Hong Mei and her family, the Simmons Wong family in their time of enduring sickness. And comforting God, we pray for those who will die today, those who will mourn their passing, and unite in us communion with the faithful of every time and place until all, until the consummation of all things. Committing to be a part of the answer to our prayers, let us pray as Jesus taught us, for Jesus is to all of us like our mother and our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, we continue to be the church wherever we find ourselves. We are the living stones who continue to work and give life to the church from our hearts, from our homes, and in our actions. The work of pastoral care continues. The work of outreach continues. The work of learning new ways of being together continues. And the work of greeting the stranger continues. The work of caring for the sick continues and the love of Christ through the Holy Spirit continues to motivate our hearts. Let us consider how our blessings might become a blessing for others. There are still many ways to offer our donations and our blessings and our offerings to our community. You can still mail in your offering envelopes um, to using our um, uh, physical mailing address to Emmanuel United Church, which is 22 Bridgeport Road West, Waterloo, Ontario, postal code N2L2Y3. You can also sign up or modify your PAR, your pre-authorized remittance, by calling Laura Mutton in our main office at phone number 519-886-1471. You can also go online to the Emmanuel United Church website at emmanueluc.ca and click on the Canada Helps link. And you can always send an email to our treasurer at donate at emmanueluc.ca. And so friends, for the gifts that we will receive and that the gifts we have received, we give thanks. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, and generous God, you want justice rolling down like water. Accept these gifts from our hands, which we cast upon the waters of your love, a generous, ever-flowing stream, feeding the hungry, helping the sick, and all in of those in need. Accept these gifts for the work of your church, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Stephen. So this is a picture of Liz File. She is uh, one of our congregation members. Um, and Liz is a, a nurse. And I believe she works for the Grand River Hospital System.
currently uh, positioned at Freeport and uh, standing beside the grave of Florence Nightingale. Thank you for sharing that picture. What an incredible contribution to the service. And uh, our final hymn today will be from Voices United, number 380, and it is called She Comes Sailing on the Wind. And again, Patrick Martin will be singing for us, and Nancy Martin will be playing. So the lyrics will come up on your screen, um, and uh, take it away as you are able. Passage of her flight, 
God, whose will for us is healing and wholeness, grant us joy and comfort and strength and peace. Let us go forth now, becoming love and seeing God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ever ask or imagine. God sees you. God blesses you and God keeps you. And it is for this reason that the peace of Christ is with us all. Go in peace and become love. Amen. Amen. And now I would invite Stephen to unlock our microphones and our uh, cameras. And uh, you can go yeah. ahead and unlock the camera. Oh, that's too bad. Is that good? It's good. 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 Rachel and Jen. Hello. Rachel and Jen. Hi, Hi. No, it doesn't do anything. I can't use it. Okay. Hello, Nancy. Yeah, but when you make the video, Wendy, I want to you. 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 I want to Okay, so we got everybody muted now. So does anybody have uh, an announcement or good news? I see Leslie's handed up. So go ahead, Leslie. Uh, don't forget also today, thank you for your prayers, but today is also International Day for Transphobia, Homophobia, and Biphobia. So raise your flags, which I have two over here somewhere. There we go. There's one. So I just wanted to make that little announcement. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks That's for your prayers. Hey, Thanks. if Dougie's out there, maybe it would be a good time to raise the flag again at the church. <laughs> but don't get stuck in a tree, Dougie. Uh, okay, who's next? Paul, I said you had your hands up. Okay, Paul Rupo. I have a question. When are we doing the cleanup around the church? This Saturday? Good question, Paul. Some of the uh, there were some members of the spiritual ecology group that were out around the church yesterday. I know Linda did a little bit of cleanup, but does anybody have an answer to officially when we are going to do the cleanup around the church? Well, I I know David McGinnis has been uh, eager to do stuff, so I've given him permission to do something. So, Paul, I don't know if you've been over to take an inventory. Maybe you could have a look at what needs to be done, and then we can try to pull a group together um, this week for next weekend. Well, I've driven by a few times, and a lot of the flowers haven't even haven't taken the old uh, deadhead stuff off that's died over winter, uh, particularly along Bridgeport. And there's a lot of stuff that needs to be cut back. Otherwise, we won't get any new growth. So do you want to try to do something next weekend? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, weather okay. permitting, let's try to do it like for a couple hours on Saturday morning. Good, good call. Okay. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, be there, be square. <laughs> Have some uh, garbage bags? Yeah, I got my trailer. Okay, bring your trailer, throw all the junk in. Anybody else like to come along? Please uh, 
please uh, join us. Let us know if you can, anything you want to volunteer. I don't see any of your hands up. <laughs> uh, all right, you heard it here first. 9 a.m. tomorrow, uh, next Saturday at the church. Anybody who wants Marie's to do some good. cleanup? Marie's going to hand up. Yeah, Arthur has his hand up. I'm sure Doug will come along. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Okay, and oh. I see Sharon Wilson, you have your hand up, hon. I would like Rachel to get in the picture with you. <laughs> Rachel and Boots. Yeah, Ra Rachel. Wednesday's your anniversary. And uh, oh, yeah. uh, Boots, where are you? Meow. I want to wish you a happy anniversary Wednesday from my heart to yours. Thank if you. I was married, it would have been 50. No, you yeah, the Sunday of the day two four. That's when we got married. That's right. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much. And by the way, you should be using the uh, thing I bought you to put your books on. Just saying. Uh, oh, I did. I, I am using my uh, um, the, the book folder thing. So you mean, yeah. Yeah, I, oh, I will do that. Jen, okay. I'd just like to make a quick thank you to Patrick for the wonderful singing this morning. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Patrick, you're amazing. Thank you, Patrick. And um, and I see Brendan is patiently waiting. Brendan, Brendan. Hi, Brendan. Uh, actually, this is something about my bike. I have no train wheels on my bike, and I can also go on down very steep and big hills. Good job. <laughs> no train wheels. Good job, buddy. Um, amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Wow, big boy. Good for and, you. And I also know one way it's because speed actually gives you some battle speed and mobility, and also it was their anniversary last week. <laughs> that's right, that's right. It was your parents' anniversary last week. Did you celebrate? Yep. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for sharing so much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anybody else would like to make an announcement or good news? Mary Sulis, I see, has your hand up. Yes, now I'm unmuted. Um, as most of you know, my daughter Jane and her family live in New Zealand. And because they have got everything really well under control there, they moved back to their apartment in Auckland. And in a few hours, because it's already Monday morning there, they will be going back to school. Oh, so, wow. The kids are all excited that they're going back to school. And because there's, um, like, they have one or two or no new cases each day, and they've only had 21 people out of 4 million die in the thing that it's they do not have community spread and are able to really follow through on anybody who does get sick so things have opened up quite a bit there and they're quite happy about that well that's good then i bet the kids are just incredibly excited we need to oh, take yes. it from new zealand we need to take example <laughs> well i mean you new zealand is is very uh isolated so it's very easy for them just to shut down their borders and say nothing comes in to the country and any and so and it's only for five million four million people so it's a big difference but right. alec is all excited because he'd only been in school since the beginning of february so february march he had only had two months of school and then he had to uh had five weeks six weeks of shutdown so he's very excited to be back at school Thanks, Mary. Thanks for sharing. That's a good news that uh, there's a part in the world of that's got COVID under control. So there's hope in that too. Melissa. Um, uh, Melissa. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for the beautiful prayer shawls that were given. They, they kept us warm and lovely. And uh, Erica really likes hers and she sleeps with it at night. 
So thank you to the various knitters who produced the prayer shawls um, because we, we had a chance to go to Godrich last week for Melissa's grandmother's funeral, um, properly socially distanced. And so we're now at home isolating again for the next week and a half while we wait to make sure everything's okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you um, to Mary Ann Welline, who has been doing an ama amazing job of, of, of delivering those prayer shawls. And, uh, and the, the people who have made those prayer shawls and that prayer shawl ministry has become incredibly important um, in these times. And so, you know, you just never know when uh, the different ministries of the church will become prominent and highlighted. And, and this week, and during the, this time, sorry, it's it's really the sewers and the needle craft group that have made a huge impact in being able to spread love. And so, uh, just my heart goes out, and and uh, I'm so glad. I know what it's like to receive one too. It's it's a very very special thing. So a big thank you. I think Murray and Lisa had something maybe. Murray and Lisa. Um, um, our, our new cat, Tabitha, is getting, um, really used to us, so she's walking around now. <laughs> All around the house. Turn the picture? Mm -hmm. the house. Everybody wants to see the picture of Tabitha. All right. Well, we'll get it. We've got our rocks, too, yeah. that we painted. <gasps> Oh, the oh, rocks! No. Look at your rocks! Oh my no, you just made my heart swell. The Holy Spirit just entered my heart because I saw your love rocks. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I've got it. We're gonna go out this week and we're gonna place our love rocks. I'm so proud of you. So, Jen, I should just say that I did a, a quick little calculation here based on the number of people online and how many people were at the end, I think we had 75 people listening today. <laughs> That's oh, great. Yay. 75 people listening today. That's awesome. I'm really looking forward to keeping this type of uh, worship going even after uh, we are starting to gather back, which, you know, will be a while yet. But even once we get back there, it'll be really important to continue to keep the people who are, be, are able to come online, but not get into the building. So, you know, you just never know uh, how, how church is going to change and ebb and flow. And I think this is going to be a really great uh, addition to um, the already great work that goes on in our uh, manual wayside communities. Good stuff. And one thing we should recognize that even though we're looking at about 25 people's cameras here, there are probably another 13 more people connected by telephone, and it's a little harder for them to interact, but we're going to work at even getting that interaction going too. Everyone who's listening, we're so glad that you're here. Thanks for dialing in. Uh, we're just so grateful to know that you are are listening and uh, and tuning in. It means a really, really great deal to all of us. Thanks, Jen, for doing what you do and everyone else. Uh, well, you're very welcome. You you all fill my heart so much. Go ahead. Have a good time. It looks mm -hmm. like we might be done with our announcements. And anything else that anybody can think of? Yep. Uh, oh, there's a picture. Of, uh, there's Tabitha. <laughs> Gorgeous. Very nice. Gorgeous. Uh. <laughs> Thanks for giving her such a loving home. And Megan, I love to see your face. Oh my God. Um, how's our little boy? Come a little closer. <laughs> Sorry, he's breastfeeding right now, so I'm trying oh. to spare you from that. But hi, <laughs> hi everybody, it's great to see you. Sorry we haven't been attending recently, but he's been sleeping pretty late. So I've been trying to get his routine established, but he decided to wake up at 4 a.m. today. So uh, <laughs> we were Looking awake. <laughs> but here, I'll give you a little shot. There he is. Oh, hi. hello, Alex. We love you. Hi, Alex. Say hi to everybody. 
She's kind of upset I woke him up. <laughs> okay. Thanks for being with us whenever you can. Michelle, how oh, are you great. doing? M Michelle Bennis, how are you doing? Uh, you must be due really soon. Uh, Michelle. Oh, maybe, maybe it's, she stopped. It's just Brendan. He's taking the camera. I yeah. think Michelle Michelle stepped away from the camera, but she's due due in the sixth, and uh, so far everything's doing well. Oh, there she is. There she is. I think she fell asleep. <laughs> wow. 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 So I'm officially full. Sorry. Oh, oh they froze. I think she said she's officially full term. Oh, good job. That's good. Can't wait to get my hands on another baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, y'all look so so good, Wendy. I love your church hats. Don't forget I'm dragging you up. <laughs> and uh, right after the service here, I have to go for my next jogging uh, session, my next run. So. Uh, it's a hard Good slog, for you. but I'm committed to running. So uh, well, I'll post another funny picture of me dying. And uh, <laughs> There's a really nice trail by the river in St. Jacob's, Jen. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll see. Uh, oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Uh, Rachel says that'll be nice. Maybe we'll go off to have to go out and hit a trail sometime. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming, for logging on, for tuning in, for staying connected during the week, and just all in all being your amazing self. Uh, look forward to your email this week. I'm going to have a message to your spiritual We did some video uh, recording yesterday, and uh, we're going to send that out. I'll send it out probably on Tuesday. So keep an eye on your me emails. And, uh, We'll see you again all next week. Bye now. Bye. 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 See you, everybody. Bye, <laughs> Mike. Bye, guys. Bye, Erica. Bye. Bye. Yeah, say bye, Delaney. Bye, Dee All right, we'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye, Erica. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Right. Thank you, Mommy. <laughs>